Once Bibi Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, if I know which night is the night of decree, what should I say in it? What should I say during it? In another uh, version, it is what dua should I make, right? So she's saying, ke, uh, Ya Rasulullah, Ara'ayta in alimtu ayyu laylatin laylatul qadr ma aqulu fiha. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quli Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. You say, O oh Allah, you are the pardoning one. You love to forgive. So forgive me. Simple. Simple, right? That's it. This is the dua of Laylatul Qadr. Now, we might think, why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with all of the knowledge and the wisdom which he had and with all of the revelation which he received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this particular answer to Bibi Aisha in regards to the greatest nights out of the whole year, greatest night out of the whole year, right? Why? What night is this, by the way? Just a very, very quick reminder. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Which night is it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, search for it in the last odd nights of Ramadan. So this is a night, hours between Maghrib to Fajr, more valuable than a thousand months. Right? Allah has said that in the Quran. So that means approximately 83 years and four months. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, Allahumma innaka ufuvun tuhibbul afwa faafuani. End of story. That's it. It's not even a very long dua, right? It's not even a long dua. The supplication for the last 10 nights, the supplication that we are supposed to focus on, right? Doesn't it seem a bit strange? Have you ever thought about it? Out of every, there are so many duas which are much longer. Like for example, the last uh, ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, right? Or there are many, many other uh, duas from the Quran, from the bastoon duas are much longer. And sometimes, you know, sometimes kids particularly ask. Sometimes adults are a little shy and asking. But I'm sure all of us must have thought about that at some point in time. Allahumma inna ka afuvun tuqabul afwa faafuani. Bas, how many times? Hmm? How, is this it? No other dua? People ask that a lot during, during Ramadan as well. Bas, that's all? That's all? Let's see why. Let's, let's look at this dua in a little bit of detail and then we will understand. We know that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned a lot of his qualities, yeah, which are his characteristics, which are the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, right? We're all aware of that, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the fact that he is a Rahman, right? Abundantly merciful, mentioned approximately 57 times. A Rahim, consistently merciful, Mentioned 115 times, right? Al Halim, any forbearing and lenient. Al Halim actually means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hold a grudge. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just says, chalo, chalo, theek hai. you know, like that kind of attitude. That is Al Halim, very lenient, very lenient. You know, like some teachers or some parents or some adults or whatever, some people are very lenient in our lives as well. And we, we always love that khala or a kupi or a mamu. Usually, mamus are like that, right? Very lenient. Kuch bhi karlo. So Al Halim, that helm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, the part of him, part of his characteristic, right? He's not quick to judge. Can you imagine if every time we did something dodgy, a bolt of lightning came and or some current went through? Does that happen? Was Allah Qadir to do that? Of course he was. Of course he was. That doesn't happen. Right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Halim. And then, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Maghfira. We know about that Al Ghafir, Al Ghaffar, Al Ghafur, mentioned more than 70 times in the Quran. Right? So, and Ghafara, what does that mean? To, to hide, to, to, to cover up something, cover up something. So, then why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or why is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, not Maghfira? Right, not maghfira. Don't use the word uh, Allah's name Rafu Rafur over here. Right, 
but use Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, Al-Af. This is an amazing hadith about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's maghfirah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a believer near him and shelter him with a screen and ask him. This is on the day of judgment, right? Uh, did you commit such and such sins? He will say, yes, my Lord. Obviously, what will he say at that time? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on asking him till he confesses to all of his sins and he is going to think, I'm done for now. I'm ruined. And then Allah will say, I did screen your skin sins in the world and I forgive them for you today. Allahu Akbar Kabira. This is in Bukhari. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's maghfira, right? But what does that mean? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept account of all of the sins, right? See that, that Allah has kept a count. The name Al-Af, right, which is actually mentioned five times in the Quran, right, that actually means the eliminator of sins. Yani you wipe out something. It's not even there in your book of deeds anymore. It's wiped out completely, gone, right? And this root word, Al-Af, Ain, Fa, and Wow, it has got amazing meanings. Amazing meanings. The literal meanings of Al-Af, of Afu, are just incredible. First, yeah, of course, to forgive, to pardon, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that is, it's very similar to Ghafoor, right? Um, pardoning, forgiving, right? Another meaning is to heal and to restore, right? To heal and to restore. Heal and restore from what? When we sin, we actually hurt ourselves more than anything else. We get into this zone of darkness. Some people talk about, you know, our energy. Some people talk about, you know, people who do yoga or are yogis, they talk about, oh, my chakra is disturbed. Right? Have you heard that? What happens when a person is in a bad place in terms of internally, in terms of mentally, in terms of emotionally, particularly it's all happening in the heart, right? What is going on is that our soul, our nafs, our heart, you know, our, our pulp is from who? It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes from very pure place, right? Its food is the wahi that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they're both coming from the same home. They're both coming from the same home, right? Everybody, all of you who are siblings, any siblings over here, you always talk about the alu gosh that was cooked in your mom's house. Although perhaps you've had alu gosh much better than that, but that taste stays with you because that was your origin, right? That's where you left from. And those tastes, those sounds, those feelings are part of you. So this poor little alb, this poor little soul who we have imprisoned inside of this body and we are suffocating it because we are not giving it the right food. So we are literally starving it to death. It's desperate to heal is desperate to be restored to its original position of purity. And when we say, Allahumma inna ka afu wun to khibbul afwa ba'afu anni, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah heal and restore this sick soul, this sick heart back to its original position of being an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will be so happy. Can you imagine starving and starving and starving? In these days when we fast, right? The first, whatever you break your fast with and that, that first sip of water, Allah, I mean, amazing, isn't it? You're alhamdulillah, nourishment to the body. So nourishment of the soul. And we get taken in by what? Music is food for the soul. This is food for the soul. That is food for the soul. Music is poison for the soul, right? So many things that we feel are the food for the soul are actually not. And we are really doing big zulm on our own self, on our own self. So such a beautiful meaning that our rub heals and restores us back to our original place. And then another meaning of uh, af is to remove all traces. We'll talk, we'll talk about that in a minute. And another is to set free, to release. Who are you releasing? Again, that poor little soul which you have... You know, jakrod in the body. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that this dunya is a prison for the believer and a garden for the disbeliever. Why is it a prison for the believer? 
because there are so many commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's following the Sharia. There are rules. There are regulations, right? He can't be, he's not free. He's not his own person, right? He's bowing down to his Lord and the, the corruption of this dunya is disturbing to him. It's like being in a prison. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets you free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets your heart free with his af, right? And it also means to turn away from punishment, to not see. You know, na, that we sin as if Allah doesn't see and he forgives as if he hasn't seen. That is al-af. That is al-af. It also means to give spontaneously bighayri khisab. Just give spontaneously without thinking about it. These days, alhamdulillah, this is the time to give a lot of sadaqa, right? Sometimes we count and sometimes may Allah give us the tawfiq that we simply open a wallet and whatever comes out, we just give. Yeah, whatever is in the home, if somebody rings the bell, whatever is in the home, you just simply go take something out of the fridge, take something out of, you know, generally, alhamdulillah, in our homes, our fridges and freezers have quite a bit, right? Do you know what is in your freezer right now? Does anybody know what is exactly in your freezer right now? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, if you do, but generally people like us don't do, know that. People who are very organized, you're like, oh, and then you realize, oh my God, there's another packet of kebab down there somewhere, which you had completely forgotten about because the freezers are huge, right? So that food is meant for people's bellies, not necessary. So one of those people that you go just take stuff out of the freezer, whoever is ringing the bell, you just give it. That is bighayri hisab. May Allah give, make us like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us like that. And af also means to give more than what is due. You know, every time we are in, in our country, in Pakistan, when we are driving by and we stop at a signal, whether it is Ramadan or not, and Ramadan particularly because there are a lot of professional beggars as well. And we know that they are professional beggars, right? We know that. But do we know why they became professional beggars? Do we know their backstory? We don't, huh? right? Why do we think that this is my Kamal or my whatever that I'm sitting inside the car or he or she or that bacha is outside knocking on my window? Wouldn't it have been the other way around as well? Very easily. Very easily do I not realize that. And a lot of times do I feel that whatever I get is something which is due to me? I'm deserving of that. I'm not deserving of that. Allah is giving me much more than I deserve. And one of the meanings of Al-Af is that. Because actually, if you have really sinned and corrupted your soul and gone all over the place, do we deserve to be forgiven? Really? Do we deserve it? No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Af is such that there is a scholar who says that if you still end up in, Jan in Jahannam, then you must have been like God knows where. Because Allah has given us so many opportunities to turn back. So just Allah is just looking for an excuse to forgive. Just looking for an excuse to forgive. So now let's look at about what, what this uh, meaning is, to remove all traces, right? Um, there is a way, there's a classical Arabic metaphor which says, of what, uh, <coughs> of, of, the riyah al asar, right? The wind applied af upon the traces on the sand, right? Asar, you know the word asar traces. A rih is the wind, right? So in the desert, when the wind blows, what happens? Whatever traces are there, you can't tell whether somebody was there or not there, if somebody walked or not walked. That is the mental picture of af. Yani completely erasing all traces. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about our asar in Surah Yaseen. Our asar are, are what we have done in this dunya, all our footsteps, wherever we have been, whatever has happened, is part of our asar, which are going to be part of our book of deeds. Right? Our feet are also going to be give evidence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what she there, this is where she used to go. And then what other kind of asar do we have that we found out, find out? Our digital footprint, right? Our carbon footprint, our water footprint, and our digital footprint, Allahu Akbar Kabira. It's embarrassing if anybody finds out about it, what all I've been up to online. I know it and my Rabb knows it. 
And when I say, Allahumma innaka afoon kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni, then he will erase all of those footprints. As if they never existed. As if I never saw anything dodgy on Netflix. As if I didn't watch without thinking, without even worrying about it, night after night, night after night, whatever, whatever it is that I watched. He will erase it. As if I never wrote that nasty comment on Twitter. As if I never judged people because of their Facebook profile. All of that is part of a digital footprint. As if I never wasted water when I was doing wudu. Can you imagine doing wudu, one of the most amazing modes of worship? Wudu is part of worship, right? And you waste water and you mess it up. You mess up your ajr because you're wasting water. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even if you're sitting next to a river, do not waste water when you're doing wudu. And we don't think about it that majority of this dunya is starving for water, is thirsty. And we, what are we doing with our water that is available to us? Half of it, we flush down the toilet, clean water. Yeah. What about our carbon footprint? Do we ever worry? Who do we ever wonder? We are always talking about, right? We all have carbon footprints, personally as well. Personally as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase all of our dodgy behavior in this dunya when we invoke Al-Af. Because it's like the wind going over all of my life. Right? So this is an opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in this month, in these last nights, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, help us, help us, inshallah ta'ala, that we don't blow it. That we don't blow it. Because, you know, once, um, I'm just, yeah. Once a man came to Ali ta'ala anhu and said, Ya Ali, I was deprived of praying Qiyamul Layl, the night prayers, and I don't know the reason. Ali ta'ala an said, You are a man who has been chained by his sins. Right? So you and I need to have an action plan. Quite seriously. We need to have an action plan. What should we do? What should we do? Search for your sins, literally. Purify your intention. Search for your sins and then do dua, dua, dua. Right? Sometimes in normal days as well and in Ramadan also, we are sitting, sitting there quite literally, honestly, not doing anything. If you, in hindsight, if you think about it, what was I doing? Why did I delay my salah? You're not going to find an answer. What is that? Something is holding you back. And like Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, scholars have told us that as well, that sometimes your sin become a hijab between you and God. And we want it lifted, inshallah. And these are the nights to get it lifted because Allah has said that. That no matter what you have done, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, kasir, And he pardons much. Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolves his slaves from the fire, saves them from the fire. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma rabbana ja'alna minhum, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky and then you ask for forgiveness from me, I will forgive you, right? All of the sins, right? Rahim. Say, my beloved Prophet, to my slaves, O oh, my beloved slaves who have transgressed against themselves. Now you understand the meaning of this ayah also, when you understand us. How we transgress against ourselves, we do zulm on our own self when we sin, because that is not who we truly are. Yeah? Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. There is no sagira or kabira or this or that, all sins. Jami'a, that is the promise of our Rabb. Yeah? Innahu huwal rahim. 
So now with this little bit of understanding in these nights, starting from now, starting from now, it's already 15th Ramadan. With this feeling and with this understanding, should not we be bowing in front of our Rabb and saying, Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. What scholars tell us is that some of the pious predecessors, they used to say, Allahumma inna ka'afu wa kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. Yeah, so they add the word karimun there as well, right? And you can do that because this is not a verse of the Quran, right? And when you make dua, the dua comes from your heart, right? The dua comes from your heart. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who have the tawfiq to make the dua and make us from among, among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept this dua and completely erase whatever dodgy thing is in our amal, ameen, ya Rabbal